Hello everyone and welcome back with this new video. One of the most interesting new project is definitely QuakeCore. And finally, the QuakeMiner is here. Global miner with Wi-Fi and Helium LoRaWAN connectivity, public access and collecting QCT tokens is now live, QuakeCore mission is to build the largest decentralized disaster detection network. With this video, I not only want to give you a summary to have the main info of the project, but also show you the installation of the device and rewards and tokenomics. So let's begin. QuakeCore is a deep in revolutionizing the detection of earthquakes, tsunamis, volcano eruptions, and other natural disasters. The team is fully doxed, and along with Dr. Rudiger Strack, is not only composed of experts in entrepreneurship engineering, cybersecurity, but also DePin. I am in it too, and I'm helping for example in tokenomics. As I think everyone knows, the damage and deaths that earthquakes or other natural disasters unfortunately cause happen too often in our world. And this is because, first of all, there is never an adequate prevention to this phenomenon. Current methods of earthquake or disaster detection and warning are often inadequate and imprecise. Traditional seismometer networks are costly and difficult to implement in remote areas. This is what QuakeCore wants to solve and believes in the solution via DPIN. Establish a global network using blockchain and IoT devices for efficient, real-time warnings. Gather real-time data on earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, and avalanches. By building a strong network, we can save lives in the process. QuakeCore is a D-PIN built currently on Peak, and you can set up your own seismic station, the Quake Miner, and earn QCT tokens for collecting data. In addition to the Quake Miner, QuakeCore is also working on the Quake Fiber, the Quake Smart app, and transport nodes. The Quake Fiber will be a more professional device and also more expensive, as it's an advanced distributed acoustic sensing DAS, device that utilizes fiber optic networks to detect and monitor seismic activity, and it's still a long way off. The Quake Smart app, on the other hand, is in development, so it's not long now. And it will also be important outside the D-PIN or crypto world, because for $1 a month, this app warns people in real time of earthquakes, tsunamis, storms, and volcanic eruptions, thanks to the network we're building. And speaking of the QuakeSmart app, transport nodes will play an important role. Since QuakeCore's mission is to detect and transmit data on natural disasters in real time worldwide, it's necessary to deploy at least three nodes in every country. Transport nodes are critical to ensuring extremely low latency, rapid data transmission, and instant alerts. So if you want to earn rewards and monetize on QuakeCore, in addition to the QuakeMiner, you can do so with transport nodes. The QuakeCore node operator receives rewards based on app activity in their assigned country. The sale of transport nodes is very limited, and there will be no more in the future. The transport node isn't active yet. But if you're interested, you can find the link in the video description, and I plan to make a dedicated video about it in the coming weeks. Anyway, back to QuakeMiner. Since public access and collecting QCT tokens is now live, the device must be installed on a vertical wall. But before we talk about the installation, this is the unboxing. Okay, first let's remove this bag so we can start. Now that we have our box, let's start unboxing the Quake Miner. Inside, there's a USB-C cable to power the Quake Miner, as well as a screw and bracket for installing the device on the wall.
The Quake Miner's aluminum body is very nice, making it a great device for indoor use. Very importantly, these two small plastic balls are included. Attach them to the back of the Quake Miner. These will serve as a spacer, so the Quake Miner can make good contact with the wall. The first step is to connect the Quake Miner to a USB-C power source. You can use a standard phone charger and let it charge for a few hours. And important, don't force the USB-C connector into place to avoid any damage. After waiting a few hours, the next step is to press the Quake Miner's reset button once. This will start the QuakeCore Wi-Fi AP and allow you to register the miner. Using your PC or phone, connect to the QuakeCore Wi-Fi AP and then type 192.168.4.1 into your browser. This will take you to the QuakeCore configuration page. At this point, the first thing you need to do is save or screenshot the pack and serial number. These are vital for registering the device, and without them, you will not be able to register your Quake Miner. When starting the configuration, the first step, even if your area does not have Helium IoT coverage, is to select the LoRaWAN frequency for your country. If you're not familiar with it, I'll leave you this good list from Helium Mart in the video description, which shows the correct frequency for your region. For LoRaWAN, just install the miner where there is Helium IoT coverage and connection is automatically. The second step is to select the Wi-Fi network where you intend to connect your Quake Miner. It's very important if you're having trouble configuring it to make sure your Wi-Fi name or SSID doesn't contain any special characters, as this can interfere with the connection. And secondly, especially if you don't have LoRaWAN coverage, since QuakeCore uses the Google API to identify the device's location and thus avoid any spoofing or false positioning. When you connect your Quake Miner, make sure there are, in addition to your Wi-Fi, another or more different Wi-Fi connections. This way, you won't have the problem of the location being incorrect when you register the device. Instead, you'll see the correct location in the dashboard, which will also be crucial for rewards. Then enter your Wi-Fi password, make sure you've saved the pack and serial number, and finally press Submit. The device will restart and emit a beep. If the QuakeCore AP Wi-Fi appears again, it means there's an error so carefully check your settings and redo the configuration on 192.168.4.1. If instead, after a few seconds you no longer see the QuakeCore AP Wi-Fi, it means your Quake Miner has connected successfully. It will perform a software update, and you can see this because the green LED will blink continuously. The green LED will continue to blink even afterward because the device is not installed correctly on the wall, so after waiting a few minutes, let's start the installation. The QuakeCore installation must be done on a vertical wall. Don't install the QuakeCore on a wall subject to vibrations, for example, a plasterboard wall, near a door, or immediately next to a loudspeaker. If the QuakeCore is not positioned correctly, the vertical alignment is not respected, or there are sources of parasitic vibrations nearby, it will receive a false positive and therefore you will not receive rewards. As I showed in the unboxing, use the two small plastic balls provided and attach them to the back of the Quake Miner. These will serve to create a spacer so the Quake Miner can make good contact with the wall. Then, using a drill, make a hole where you intend to install the device. After testing, I can tell you that a good screw for the drill is a 4.5 mm one, so that the Quake Miner's bracket and screw fit. Then just screw in with a Phillips screwdriver and you're done. You'll know the installation was successful because the green LED will stop flashing continuously as the device is correctly installed on the wall. As for the battery, a full charge takes 12, 24 hours and the device lasts 2, 3 months. 
You can also keep a USB cable connected at all times, but it's better to unplug it every now and then to be sure to avoid battery issues. You can use a standard phone charger and that's fine. Once the installation is done, let's now see the registration in the dashboard. The QuakeCore console and dashboard is app.quakecore.com comma, and as a first step, create an account using your email. Once you're logged in, simply follow the easy steps provided by the console. As shown in the guide, you can find the link in the video description, enter the pack and serial number you saved in the configuration you made earlier, and you're done. Your Quake Miner will automatically appear in the dashboard, and you'll be able to see if it's online or not. Once you've registered, I recommend waiting at least a few minutes. And very important to appear online in the dashboard, the Quake Miner must be correctly installed on the wall. If you haven't installed it, and you have the offline status, this is the reason and therefore install it as soon as possible. If, after a while, it still shows the offline status, the position stuck at 0.00, comma, or even continuously blinks green, I recommend pressing the reset button once for one second. It will beep, then reboot, and this is usually the best solution. If you continue to have problems, please join the QuakeCore Discord and open a ticket to receive support for your issue. Since public access and collecting QCT tokens is now live, the dashboard isn't 100% operational yet, but some interesting data is already available, such as the API for many global sensors. And in the coming weeks, important tools will be released to enhance the user experience. The Quake Miner's battery level status, alarm graphs showing what the Quake Miner has recorded, the Explorer with hexagons, dollar QCT testnet token claim, and much more. So for now, to get the largest possible airdrop when the TGE or mainnet begins, make sure your device is online and assigned to your location, and you're all set. To stay up to date on wallet or NFT protection or other news, I recommend joining the QuakeCore Discord. And now let's talk about the rewards mechanism and tokenomics. The main points you need to know are, 50% of the QCT token allocation is to miners' users. The 42% incentivization pool is the allocation for mainnet rewards when TGE, expected in 2026, takes place. The 8% airdrop is the allocation to reward those participating in the beta in this initial phase. The greater your participation in the beta, with the miner operational and online, the greater your airdrop will be. There are currently no differences in country or layer mechanisms depending on where the Quake Miner is installed. This means that all countries are equal and Quake Miners receive the same rewards. And very importantly, since the Quake Miner can connect via both Wi-Fi and Helium LoRaWAN, those who connect the device to both will receive greater rewards. And why this? Since the Quake Miner is an indoor plug-and-play device, a GPS antenna dongle like a VK162 will never work well. Helium IoT isn't just important for additional connectivity, but above all, for further verification of the miner's location, and it helps a lot. From what I've learned, verifying the location with companies or organizations seeking data is crucial, and when it comes to selling data, it will be important for the project to be on the right track. However, if someone can only connect via Wi-Fi, I don't think they should be too disappointed because, compared to beta airdrop allocation of other major D-pins like Demo, which gave a large airdrop to early Autopy users, since QuakeCore has allocated 8%, it will be a great distribution for all early users. The Explorer will be hexagonal, H3 hexagons at resolution 5 like Geodnet, and includes the NFT protection mechanism. Up to 8 NFTs will be available for each hexagon. There are currently no distance restrictions because if there is a condominium, more Quake Miners can be installed. The only thing you need to respect is the hexagon rule, so only 8 Quake Miners get the full rewards. And of course, the first 8 Quake Miners installed will also obtain NFT protection. From the ninth Miner on, the rewards will be smaller. And last point. QuakeCore devices are associated with a license in utility token. We took inspiration from HNT token, and I think many know how important it was, and burn mechanism. When QuakeCore makes a sale of data through the network built around the world, 60% of funds is used to buy back circulating QCT tokens and permanently burn it. 
If you're interested in joining early on Quake Core and therefore maximizing your airdrop, you still have time as there are few devices left in stock on Deppenhaus, so shipping quickly. And in addition to coupon Il Capifox, only for a few days, you can also use the coupon ETD underscore Il Capifox for a 15% discount. You can pay with PayPal or also crypto. So in conclusion, Quake Core is one of the most interesting new D-pins. The Quake Miner is an easy device for everyone and is plug and play. So once installed on the wall, it becomes completely passive. Public access started a few hours ago, and in fact the dashboard isn't 100% complete yet. I recommend joining the Quake Core Discord to stay updated. But by registering your Quake Miner now, you can start collecting QCT tokens. And I highly recommend joining now, because the airdrop allocation for early users is very good. Furthermore, some good tokenomics mechanisms have already been established that will help the project I recommend everyone to follow QuakeCore. And by building a strong network, we can save lives in the process. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe to the channel to help me share more content. Thanks and happy mining everyone!